Oh, man. It's Tuesday. We're here. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Tech Tuesday. My name is Ben. I'm Daniel. I'm joined by Daniel today. Um, and just before like we get into anything today, I just we need to maybe clear the water a little bit. You're not Tim. No, I'm not uh, Tim. No. Those are shoes I cannot wear. <laughs> um, so and Daniel joins us from the customer service team, more specifically um, the customer service manager, um, and has been here pretty much since uh, the beginning, especially since moving to uh, Saudi Daisy, Tennessee. You may have seen him. If you go all the way back to episode three, yeah. you can see Daniel. Uh, he, he joined us then. Um, but a couple of things. Um we Tim is not in office today, and it's kind of been a busy two weeks. Certain, Very busy. yeah. We've uh, we've we yeah. have taken, um, and I want to shout out everybody uh, that's called in. Uh, if we haven't got to you, we we are trying yeah. our best, and we appreciate all the business and everybody calling in. Yeah, and we always appreciate our customers. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so, which is a good problem to have. Um, yes. but and so. With that being said, um, we want to continue Tech Tuesday, obviously. So um, we're bringing it back to you uh, live, or not live, here again on Tuesday. Um, and then hopefully we'll have Tim joining us again next week as well. Um, and just just to kind of clear the air that, that we're not walking away from Tech Tuesday in case no. anybody was wondering that. Um, it's been busy. Maybe you've seen the new um, interview um series we're talking to local shops um about um their experiences with aces and um what they're doing um in the industry so pretty sure to check uh i think no limits coming out shout out sixes customs should be out here very soon um some more suspension geek and if you're interested in doing something like that feel free to reach out um as well um so there's a lot of new things to talk about uh today um before we jump into the actual questions, which is why you've tuned in. Um, I will just to start off, um, there's a new chat feature um, yes. on the website. I'll let you, you deal with that more than I do. So, so to better help and serve our customers, what we're, we're doing right now, um, if you go to our website, right down the bottom, there's a little chat feature. Um, mm -hmm. It's support. Um, basically we're trying to, uh, not do away with emails, but you know, this way we can keep better track of what you've ordered, your orders, right. uh, customers, what, what <clears throat> they've sent us, uh, just in a better way to serve you guys. Yeah. Um, and that way you can click on that, put your question in, uh, sometimes you get an immediate response. Sometimes it's, you know, takes, you know, our, our goal is one to two business days, right. um, at most is our goal, um, we're doing our best to get those. I'm, I've got my guys working on it right now, and I believe uh, there's 50-something messages in that box. So yeah, we're, yeah. we're working through them, and we'll get to your to your response as quickly as we can. Uh, yeah. We just we just appreciate all the questions, all the comments, Interest, and, and all those feedback. Things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I will say with that, while it may seem that we're adding another thing, it's actually, like you were saying, to kind of take yeah. away because we had emails – um, we had, there are all kinds of ways that you could get in touch with us, but this kind of combines them all into one spot, keeps your order. Uh, if you've ordered with us in one place, it just kind of keeps everything together. So it's a simple thing on our end, but for you guys, uh, it may seem like an extra thing, but no, it, it, it makes it simple. Um, so check that out on our website. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is we're hiring. Um, speaking of Tech Tuesday, yes. um, we are looking for a junior technician um, to join us um, here in Saudi Daisy. So if you know anybody, if you have any friends, if you're thinking about moving down here, we'd love to bring you on um, and at least interview and, and see um, if you would make a good fit for us and uh, if you'd be um, – if we make a good fit for you. So if you're interested in that, that sounds anything like you're um, wanting to do, we'd love to have you fill out a um, application. I will leave um, a link in the description to Indeed. So that was a long-winded intro, yes. but I feel like it was necessary. Yes. In a way, and there's, we're not stopping Tech Tuesday. We're not, um, you know, we're, we're we're still going here. We're still for the people. We're still doing this. Um, and there are some things that have been changing. And some new things to come that are exciting. So, 
without further ado, um, we'll jump right into the questions. Let's get into it. So it looks like Big Block 406 TA asks, can we get map sensor data in the handheld to read in KPA so we don't have to convert from PSI? Uh, logging with the laptop is KPA, but logging through the handheld, it's PSI. In the tuning software, the fuel map is in KPI. Um, or KPA, excuse me. What I would say, um, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Uh, you can go into the handheld, go into settings, mm -hmm. and go in there and change the uh, if from imperial to metric. And yep. that'll actually show um, it in KPA. Now, one thing to note, and something new, and I think, think uh, everybody knows about, or maybe you don't, uh, we have new tuning software on mm -hmm. our website. If yep. you don't have the current tuning software, uh, go download it. Yes, uh, it has a really new, neat new feature uh, where you can actually read data logs on the software. Mm -hmm. um, that'll help you kind of track down what you're doing. It'll it'll trace it out for you. Um, that way, if you want it, I do believe you can view it in both. Yeah. Um, but you know that's a good way to see uh, if you want to see it in K KPA. You can put it in KPA by putting it in Imperial, uh, or excuse me, metric. Metric. And if you want to put it in PSI, you can put, put it, it in Imperial. In Imperial. Mm -hmm. uh, that way you can display whatever you, you want to read it as. Yep. Yep. Um, that's definitely, I shouldn't say like, um, I don't know. That's one thing that I didn't know or originally when people would call in and ask about that. Um, but yes, you can choose between Imperial or metric. Depending on wherever you are, I know we've got some people in France and Norway and Ireland and, and all over the world. And then we have our good old Americans loving the imperial system. Well, so. actually, actually, that's that's what something a lot of people don't know. Yeah. ACES is worldwide. Yeah. We, we've grown worldwide. We've got dealers out there. So uh, I, I'm, I'm, yep. I'm thankful for the growth that yeah. ACES, we're seeing in ACES. For sure. Um, all right. This is from Garrett Rath bone um he says hoping for a better understanding of how different se different settings in the handheld change the configuration does choosing a different cam option change any other settings than the base fuel table how much does the displacement selection affect how it runs are you looking to make any more settings configurable in the handheld it's a great question yes so um to that note, understand the different handheld settings. Mm. Um, so you can go in there and actually the different cam types only affect the fuel maps, yep. the percentage of how much fuel is in the fuel maps. So uh, stock is, is you know, for stock to mild. Mild, um, I, I really haven't seen anybody get past mild. Uh, my application is very rowdy and it's on mild for the fuel mm -hmm. tables. Um, you know, and then, you know, the race has, adds a lot more fuel. Right. Uh, so it does. And with race, um, it, we have it in there for a reason, but most of the time when we deal with race, we kind of stand back a little bit from like the self-learning feature. Yes. Like if you're in that category, we definitely recommend you, um, getting it tuned instead of leaning right. back on the self-learning feature. So if you are wanting to take advantage of self-learning and EFI, definitely stay within that stock to mild range. I just wanted to throw that in there. Yes, in most we, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the second part of that would be uh, how much does the displacement selection affect how it runs? Um, it just scales the injectors up, so it actually increases the pulse width of, of the injectors right. and provides more fuel. Uh, so, um, yeah. you know, basically you can go in there and change the displacement, but there's also another place you can go in and change how much fuel uh, the system's getting if you need to up that level in the handheld. You can go into um, tuning, fuel, uh, and select what you select on the cam, and it's a percentage. You can add percentage, take percentage away of what you need, mm -hmm. you know, for for it actually. Yeah. Um, but you know, that's what it does. As far as tables and configurations in the handhelds, there are some things that you can change. There are some tunable aspects to the handheld. 
Um, but if you're really wanting to get in and build out a table, if you're really wanting to do those kinds of things, you are going to want to use the advanced tuning software. Um, that's why we have it. Um, and most kits, and correct me if I'm wrong, Daniel, but most kits come with a tuning cable. Yes. Um, so you shouldn't have to worry. And it's free. So if you're considering just getting an ACES kit, I would definitely just download the tuning software from our website. We don't charge you anything for it. There's no need to have a system in order to open it and look through it and see what we have to offer. And there and, and this is what I tell most customers. So ASUS, we, we try to build value around our systems, like, mm -hmm. like Ben is talking about, our cables that we include with most systems. Um, that, you know, we have authorized tuners that people, if your, your system's radical enough to where the self-learn isn't just grabbing it, um, you know, we build, build the value in it to enough where it leaves you enough space that you can search one of those tuners out and the great thing about most of our tuners are mm. they're remote so yep. they do remote tuning so you don't have to take it to a dyno if right. you need that assistance right um so it's on our website something you can you can check out yeah and, and you know definitely that's that's an option you have out there yeah you've and the last thing i'll say is like there's that realm which is the more advanced mm -hmm. um side of applications that you if larger maybe you got a billet cam maybe it's a larger it's a big block it's just a very race engine you'll lean one way and then if you're got a really stock application you're like man i was just really wanting to bolt this thing on here and go mm -hmm. most systems that we offer do that anyway but then we also have our classic series of products that Great. will be that um for you um for stock applications you're just ready to bolt it on and go so um and that closer to that old standard of plug and play that people go by so um Anyway, so I just wanted to throw that in. So there's both aspects. Yes. I just wanted to make sure that we're covering both aspects. So. Next question. So this was a simple one. And it says, where can we go to get one of those cool Asus hats or T-shirts or even stickers? Very good question. So Website. If you, if link. You, yeah. Ta-da. You yeah. can click on that. Yeah. So if you want to look like Tim or... Ben, you're uh, wearing a hat. I know I'm wearing a hat, but you know these guys do Tech Tuesday every, just about every Tuesday. But uh, if you want to go, if you can't find it, give us a call, customer service. We'll set you up with it. Yeah. Um. You know, give you a quote on it, whatever. Uh. Or you can go to our website, find it. We've got all kinds of swag on there, and actually we've got some cool accessories on there too. Yeah. So. It's true. Don Daughter Twenty Four says, uh, "Your opinion on the best AFR meter on a carburetor application." Yes, later I will convert to ACEs. Interesting question. Carburetor question good, for EFI. Good question because we not only do EFI, we have yep. ignition systems yep. too. Correct. So for you know, my dad, he's a diehard carburetor guy. So yep. He but he has ACEs uh, ignition stuff on his car. Yep. So um, Summit Jegs, they have multiple brands, but Innovate is a good one. Mm, um, they have yep. two different uh, versions. They have a single and a dual. Mm -hmm. So if you, I know a lot of people get a lot of questions about this, uh, that they want to read uh, both uh, sides of the, the, you know, system. That's a good one. Innovate is a great product um, that, yep. you, you know, you call Summit Jigs. I, I think both of them carry that one. Mm -hmm. So that'd be yeah, a good one. for sure. So this is, this is one we took off of our, um, took off of our group that we have on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And it says, I want to get clarification on something that I realized I made an assumption about. What PSI does a tank conversion pump built-in pressure regulator take it down to? Uh, great mm. question. Great question. So, the tank conversion pump, they should run at 58 PSI. Yep. So, if you're running something... I think all of our internally yes. regulated systems do that, by the way. So, if you've got a command center 2 or a tank conversion pump, it's going to be 58. Yes. So, as you're saying. So make sure that you're going in the handheld. Yes. Going into and scaling the injectors, the rated injector mm. pressure, make that 58 because it comes set preset at 43 and a half. Yes. Yeah. So make sure you change that so your injectors are scaled yeah. properly and are run properly. Yeah. And if you don't have those systems, keep it at 43 and a half because yep. that's what we do recommend running our systems at for the yep. most part. Right. Yes. Or the most part. For the most part. <laughs> Andy Boris, this is also from Facebook, says using uh, the ACES supplied pressure sensor for the fuel pressure, the handheld shows 975.7 PSI. Mm -hmm. Am I reading that correctly? Yeah. Without, hand, uh, without the fuel line. Sensor bad or just a software glitch, and when the line is pressurized, it'll give a true reading. So, 
I'll yeah, let you so, handle that. <laughs> so 975.7 is the upper limit of that sensor. So sometimes when it's not reading pressure at all, it'll read that. I so see. once you pressurize the system and the sensor picks up that reading, it'll read true. Mm. Uh, a lot of people don't get that. Um, you know, just for instance, my my car has one on it mm. and with the kill shot and it'll read 975 on it. When you crank it over and it sees pressure, it goes right to what it should. Okay. Very cool. One of the last questions here before we wrap up from Jed Saunders 7782 says, Hey guys, putting the in tank retro pump in and was wondering what size wire to run to it. Instructions say uh, 14G, but seems kind of small. What is your input? So mm. here's what I'll tell you um, it says 14 gauge. If you want to put, and my rule of thumb, use the same gauge wire that's provided whether that be 14, 12, whatever else. Um, you can't go wrong going mm. a little bit larger. Uh, that way it can carry the load. Um, heat resistance is a real thing. So I would say use the same gauge wire yeah. that's provided, yeah. and you should be just fine. Just make sure if you extend that wire, you're using a good quality connection, solder mm. or heat shrink uh, joint, something like that that gives a good connection because a bad connection can cause heat, can cause product failure, mm -hmm. things like that. So uh, make sure you're using quality connectors and, and while you're doing that. I think that's all for that all we can fit in for today. But at the same time, um, there are a lot of questions um, that we haven't had a chance to get to on both platforms um, that normally we would with Tech Tuesdays um, being on the more regular. So we will come back to these. If we didn't get to them today, we will get to them in the future. Um, hopefully maybe even next week maybe we'll just have a longer episode next week and just try to fit in Sounds as many good. um questions as we possibly can so um but with that being said daniel i appreciate you taking a bit of your busy schedule i know up in customer service yes. the phone's ringing all the time so um we're coming back here and doing tech tuesday with me as far as you guys thank you very much for watching this episode of tech tuesday if you liked it please feel free to leave a like down below if you have a question about um efi um or aces efi um feel free to leave a comment down below and if anybody you know is thinking about switching to efi or if you're switching to efi um point in our direction we'd love to help them out in any way that we can um but yeah until next time, we'll see all of you guys in the next video. Bye for now.